Happy Friday, guys, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Dubs. I'm your host, Bill T. Well, it's Friday, so you know what that means. You got another fresh podcast to listen to. And you may have noticed that recently over the past few months, I've been checking out a lot of these uh, drag and drive events and uh, talking about them, interviewing people, you know, Anton and AJ, and then doing the power tour west in my crew cab by my, uh, you know, with my, my friend Brent and doing some things like that. Well, the guys that were doing it uh, have been doing it for the past few years. I get on the podcast this week, and they've been doing it in the Midwest. These are uh, the corn, one of the corn panzers and the beer panzers. We've got uh, Prescott Phillips and Chuck Fryer are on the podcast today, and these guys have been running the uh, Dragon Drive events. Uh, most importantly, Sick Week, um, and Sick Summer, and some of the various events. And we get into the detail of which is which and what the difference is between those. But these are typically around 600 mile drag and drive events and they've been holding it down in their air in their air cooled VWs respectively running 11 second quarter mile passes which is fairly decent but we really get into the minutia of what it takes to do in these events and what the experience is like so it's a good podcast this is some of the guys from the Midwest bringing it out to you and also you know Prescott Phillips he's got a new podcast that he's starting to do said he was inspired by me so uh, you'll get a plug for that at the end of this episode so you can check it out and uh, give them a follow and a listen. So that should be pretty cool. But if you guys ever thought about getting your car, building it, dragging it, and driving it, I can tell you what, from my personal experience right now, small displacement motor, best bang for your buck, is to do one of these compressor house setups. I've been looking at the superchargers for a long time, and I finally got one a while back. I've got a little video I'm going to put on YouTube this next week. It's kind of a short video of uh, George and I uh, getting this kit put on the Rag chop, and I had an 1800, and there was about 7.1 compression on a dual 40 DC and Fs, Berg specials, the whole nine yards. Uh, car ran pretty fat. Um, it wasn't, uh, it could have been tuned a little bit better, but I think the compression, you know, the, the whole combo, like for back in the day, it would have been fairly preppy. And I, it, it, peppy, and I remember, you know, when it swapped the distributor from the 009 to one of the, uh, bigger CB performance ones, uh, Magna Spark setup. It really made a huge difference, woke the thing up. I felt felt, felt it was pretty fast. Well, for 2000 bucks, I bought that supercharger from the guys at Compressor House. And if you guys reach out to me, you make sure you say, hey, I heard about this on Let's Talk Dubs. Um, totally worth the money, a thousand percent. It's worth 2000 bucks. If you've got a small displacement motor, 19, 14 or smaller, you can take this setup and put it on single carb setup. I, I did the uh, the max setup, which is the the side draft. They do have one that works with a deck lid closed. But I'll tell you this, man. You want to talk about snappy throttle response. I increased my 0 to 60 times from uh, 12, 12.8, 0 to 60 with the dual, with 1,800cc motor with dual DC and Fs, uh, 7.1 compression. I don't know what cams, and I think the heads are stock. They're ported and polished, but the best time I got out of it was 12.8 seconds after installing the supercharger going from two carburetors to one with a supercharger my zero to 60 was increased to 7.3 seconds so that is a massive difference it's literally twice as fast or um, it's it's insane how much of a difference it makes now I've got to, to gear the tranny so it works better because I like a tall gear trans and uh, this thing runs out of gear um, a little too soon for me so We've got a five speed's gonna end up in the vert. I'm also working on, I'm uh, sorry, not the vert, the rag top. I'm also working on doing an, an old school retro stereo system in there. If you've been following my Instagram, I rebuilt some Rockford Fosgate, the punch speakers from five and a quarters, went through rebuilding those and uh, picked up some punch, original punch amps that have been gone through from a guy here in Vegas who's got a Facebook page, sells old school car audio equipment. So we're working on an OG old school system in the rag shop. So hopefully, you know, this uh, next one crazy weekend, you guys will be able to see the new stereo system in there and everything in there and check that out. So lots of cool stuff happening here. Uh, don't forget, go subscribe to George's YouTube channel. That's The Wagon on YouTube. Uh, while you're at it, you can subscribe to mine as well if you're not already subscribed to it. But there's some good content on there and plenty of cool stuff to look at. George's got plenty of instructional videos in mine. It's just nonsense of me going around here and there and videotaping uh, Volkswagen stuff. But for sure, check it out. But I'm excited to get this podcast out there, really give you guys a feel for what these drag and drive events are like. And again, these are the guys that have been doing it for quite a long time. So you'll know Prescott Phillips. He wrote a book on how to rebuild an air-cooled engine. So 
Uh, some of those details you'll be able to get at the end of the podcast to order a book, get all the stuff that you need. Uh, support the guys that support the podcast. Go to subscribe today at vwtrendsmagazine.com. That's vwtrendsmagazine.com. And don't forget, go get some pimp stuff for your car at rosswolf.com. That's right, rosswolf.com. I also wanted to mention the guys at Lufthaus on the East Coast. There'll be a link down in the description. They are doing a drive burn your oil challenge, they're calling it. So they have uh, a link that you'll click on at the bottom that you'll see in the podcast description below. And the details are who can drive their car the most in 2024. What will happen is you'll get a, uh, a Klingon sticker for your window. You scan the QR code on the sticker and upload your name, starting mileage in your car. And at, at the end of 2024, they're going to pick a winner for whoever drove their Volkswagen the most, and they're going to win $250 MP credit through the shop and a year's worth of oil, up to four oil change parts and vintage uh, line row motor oil. So check them out today. Go check out the guys at Lufthaus.com. That's the Lufthaus.com. T-H-E-L-U-F-T-H-A-U-S.com. So it's a Burn Your Oil 2024 competition pack. So go check them out today. Uh, those guys are doing a pretty cool thing and don't forget, get out there and drive your stuff. So, well guys, without any further ado, man, speaking of driving, let's talk about drag and drive this week with Prescott Phillips and Chuck Fryer from the Midwest beer panzer and a corn panzer too many panzers on this podcast on let's talk dubs. You probably don't know that there's a new Volkswagen out that doesn't look like a Volkswagen. Okay, everybody. So on today's show, well, you've heard me in the past couple episodes, we talked to uh, AJ Sims, Anton Walker, and those guys that were doing Death Week. And then I had my little trip that I did with um, with the uh, Power Tour, which is kind of a completely different animal. And over the past couple of years, you know, after interviewing Prescott Phillips and talking to some of the guys in the Midwest, I, and those guys hit the Midwest scene pretty hard. So I wanted to have both of them on the podcast today. And so we're, 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 we're interviewing two gentlemen out of the Midwest that, that drag do drag and drive events in their Volkswagens. And so on today's show, I've got Prescott Phillips, which you guys will remember that's been on the podcast before. And if you haven't bought his book, go out and buy his book on rebuild engines. And we'll give that a plug later on in the podcast. And then I've also got Chuck Fryer and Chuck is out of just outside of Illinois and he is a corn panzer. And so we've got the corn panzer and the beer can and the beer panzer on the podcast today. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Well, hello here. So since Prescott, since you've been on the podcast before, we're going to let Chuck take the lead on this thing. Now, both of you sure. guys have been doing drag and drive events for a few years in the Midwest over there, right? Sure. Yep. And now just to give our listeners an idea of what you guys bring to the table, give me, uh, Chuck, we'll go with you first. What's the setup on your car that you do the drag and drive events? It, uh, it's nothing fancy. It's, uh, 2332 cc naturally aspirated engine with a four speed swing axle transmission what your car pretty much stock gears it's a 62 rag top so 62 rag top what kind of wheels are on it well for for the street use it has uh repop brms and for the track it has urcos okay so you go so you switch it up to the urcos for the track and so you're yep. running 2332 40 ideas what cam you're running in that dude that's uh fk89 so fk89 so it's a, it's, it's a high revving cam and then right yeah your and it's all off the shelf parts it's you know 10 10 and a half 10.7 to 1 compression and what's the octane you guys are getting in the midwest for the supreme for the premium we can get 93 most of the time unless we're in iowa and then <laughs> then we yeah, iowa, get so. uh water we just they run on water and corn over there so yeah yeah it's terrible out here but we yeah 90 93 is pretty attainable yeah we get 91 is the best we get on the west coast unless you're at like a rebel and they have actual race gas which is like nine bucks a gallon but uh so 
what so one of the things i want to talk about is kind of talk about the setups that you guys have on your cars and so um so prescott uh, prescott what what's your car that you take to the drag and drive events and then we'll just start talking about how that how you guys started deciding to run these things together okay yeah my my car is real similar to chuck's it's a uh, mine is based off a of 53 uh oval window that's uh got a grafted on sunroof it's on a 63 pan uh you know so it's king pan swing axle it's but it's pretty um engine wise it's pretty much the same thing i just uh, i have a couple different engines i put in the car um last year i ran a 2332 with wedge ports and 10 to 1 and uh fk89 and the motor i just finished freshening up was the engine i had originally in the car uh same thing uh 2332 naturally aspirated super flows idas uh but this it flattened out a cam two years ago and um i put in a cb 2300 cam Uh, i i had it laying around and i got it to work so that's that's the setup that's going in the car for for this spring um i upped my compression to the same compression that chuck has because i'm sick of him going so much faster than me so (laughs) mine's up up at 10.7 as well on pump gas and now you gotta you gotta you gotta watch it with the pump gas and uh in the in the crazy compression it's it's a fine line we run yeah, and I mean ten and a half to one's really pushing it, right? I mean that's like the the the, the absolute. It's got to be optimal conditions if you're out there in hundred degree weather. It's not happy. Yeah, it, it's 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 fine on the track. On the track, it doesn't know any better because you got floored. But it's it's right. driving it's driving track to track that gets all nuts and crazy because you know here you are you know you pump some some garbage premium at some podunk gas station and you're hoping. You're hoping it's got some acting to it, but if it doesn't, you know, you like on my you, car, I got to back the timing way down, and you notice know, pretty it. quick it starts making funny noises. Yeah, as soon as you take off from that gas station, you're like, oh man, you can't even go half throttle out the thing sounding like it's, it's you know, you're pouring marbles down the throats. Now it, it's it, it's it, terrible. Out of curiosity, have either one of you guys looked into those new Bluetooth distributors that they have now? <clears throat> so they have a distributor. No. It's called a one two three distributor. And it's got yeah, a, I've heard of them, but I've never played with them. Yeah, you can change the timing on your phone. Yeah, right from your phone, you can change the advance yeah. on it. So. Holly has a, <laughs> our uh, MSD has an ignition box that'll that'll uh, do that. I think. Yeah. You know, it's not distributor, but you can you can adjust timing right there on a phone app. Yeah. So I, I wonder how helpful that would be. Now, the last question is in respect to the cars. Well, there's two more questions. So, what are you guys running for final drive, ring and pinion, and all that stuff? Oh, I run a 412 ring and pinion with a 378 first gear, a 206 seven second. Third gear is a 132, and the only time we use fourth gear is on the road, and it's a 089. I think it's going to be an 082 next year, though. Yeah, Chuck's, Chuck's gearbox is on the stand right now. I'm building Chuck's box for his car as we speak. I'm just waiting for my order from Weddle to show up. And now I can it up. you said that's a 412 ring opinion. Yes. Now I have, and, and I don't know, Prescott, you're the, you're, you're the trans guy um, with the 412. So I, in my double cab, you know, everybody, when you look at freeway flyers, it says, you know, everybody's running a 388 with a 080, mm-hmm. 089. Now it, there is a taller ratio to do than that. And is that a 412 with an 082? Well, see a 412. And an 82, actually a 412 and a, a 77 is the same as a 388 and a 82. So last year I built the box with a 412 and a 77 port. And I'll be turning the same RPMs as that. But my tires are a little taller, so it's it's not quite exactly. But it is. it is. But we just use fourth gear for the freeway. I mean, we we'll right. go through the drafts in third gear at whatever, whatever, right. whatever. The it's uh, it's right there at at eight thousand for me. Yeah, it's pretty G- close. Give or take a hundred RPM, you're right there around eight grand. And yeah, uh, it depends on how good the the car launches. Is depending, you know, if it launches good, and you get yeah. going fast enough, quick enough, you'll hit eight grand going through the traps. Yeah, and your shift light, your shift light comes on way before the finish line, and you're just <laughs> sitting there looking at that light. 
and waiting for the finish line to show up and hoping that your motor doesn't disagree with your choices. <laughs> yeah. Well, and now uh, what what are you guys running quarter mile? Now you guys, the, all these events you do are quarter mile ETs? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quarter. And, and what do you guys run in the quarter? Um, last year for six summer, I was running fairly consistent 1185s at 110, 111 miles an hour. That's pretty, that, that, that's 1185 is what Chuck's running. Yeah, and Prescott's right there, except he just, his tires were not cooperating yeah, all I summer didn't, long. I, yeah, I'm running drag radials, and Chuck has Peter full Peter. slicks. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, full slicks. So, so my traction issues, and these most of these tracks are, it's a no prep deal, right? right. They're, they're not doing, they do a little bit of prep when the fast guys go. You know, they, 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 they put a little bit of glue down, but by the time we get up to the line, there's nothing. There is no traction. So drag radials and a stick shift car are not the hot setup. I've I've struggled with this. And they're big. They're two sixty five or no, two thirty five sixties. Right? They're eight and a half inches wide. You would think you'd get some traction, but right. they just they just you don't, don't sit work. there and bake them half. Yeah, you know? and the only time I got a good sixty foot was at Great Lakes Dragway, and I think that was because of the run order. We actually got to go up to the line right after the fast guys, and there was some traction. And Great Lakes Dragway does a pretty good job at track prep. Oh, they do a great job, yeah. yeah. Yeah, better than most of most of these other tracks. They just they don't care. There's they just want everybody to make a pass and leave. <laughs> right. Know? And and now, when's the first time that you guys did one of these drag and drive events? And they, and they're different than the Power Tour. Like the Power Tour is like a is like a rolling car show is essentially what it yeah. is and then, yeah and it's way more cars too. It, it's a ton of cars and they just do like you know it but it's so cheesy because and i hear so i tell you it's cheesy is i'm on this forum board not a forum board but a facebook page where a guys like this guy says there ought to be an award for someone that has a car older than 79 and runs all three tracks and i'm like just say you want an award guy just say you just well you just want <laughs> you know because i'm sitting here thinking like this is not a racetrack. And then I post a little video on YouTube and some guy comments, it shouldn't be called the power tour. All those cars are slow. It's like, no, you don't get it. It's different than drag week. And drag week is like, if you've got a fast yeah, drag car yeah. and it can, yeah, you can just shut them down by telling them to enter drag week and, and shut us, you know, shut them up. Now, yeah, I don't remember what your first drag week was, but I know that in 21, you told me you were registering for 22 and you were going to, and you were talking me into going and I was really hesitant. And after that 22 drag week event, I can't get enough. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's first time I've been to a, a drag and drive event was, um, great lakes dragway hosted one race and it was 2015 and the hot rod drag week went through great lakes dragway. So it's typical. I'll, uh, your heads i'll take off of work get, get at the track i think it was a wednesday morning me and my buddy went down there and we, we were down there at eight o'clock to watch cars roll in and it was just amazing it was yeah. just incredible that the whole event it, it was just we couldn't get enough my eyes never shut and <laughs> and and everything we looked at was so cool and i'm like man it would be so cool to do this so that was 2015 so like the next year I got a deal on a car, X drag car, X show car. This this fifty three that I bought was just a a hodgepodge of of people. I mean, I must have been uh, I must have been the, the the hundredth owner of this thing. Right. So everybody else had a different idea what they wanted to do with it. So it was a full interior drag car for some reason, but a full cage and and a full interior. And I'm like, well, who does that? So. So I bought it, and then when I once I and I just bought it because it was a deal. I would, I didn't plan on doing anything. I was maybe gonna flip it or parts it out, and then my buddy that went with me went with me to to Great Lakes Dragway to that first hot rod drag week. He goes, "Why don't we make a drag week car out of this? It's it seems like a perfect platform." And I'm like, "You know what? That's what we're gonna do." So that was 2016. We entered, and I said, "I tell, I said I didn't know I didn't know where the tracks were gonna be next year, but I told him if the tracks are anywhere in the, in the upper midwest we're going well sure enough that that you know that winter or whatever when they 
when they enter, um, they have the uh, registration mm-hmm. in January, I think. And um, I, I, I said the, the end, they, um, they posted out the tracks. And I was like, well, let's do it. So that gave me like seven, eight months to finish the car, you know, com- completely gut it and change it into a drag and drive car in eight months. So that's what I did. And uh, it wasn't proven out. I think I made three or four passes down the drag strip before we entered before we had to go and do drag week in 17 and after, after when I finished drag week and, and we finished, I finished, I've been in four dragon drive events and I've finished absolutely every single one. Now, some are easier than others and some got, got shortened by rain. Like the Indianapolis one, we got to Indian and it rained and it ended up, you know, it ended up being, or, or not Indianapolis, uh, St. St. Louis. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it rained. They tried to get the event in and it rained the last day. And so it got to be four days instead of five. Nice. But uh, it, it's it's after the first one, I finished it. My butt, Me and my buddy, we were just wrung out dish rags at the end of it. it it's so much work and so much driving and so much everything. Um, you don't sleep. You don't eat well. You don't do anything well. It's like a, road, it's very, like a road trip from hell. It's like you get first. you get roasted all day long in the sun, sitting out in yeah. the staging lanes, and then cruising your car in ninety degree heat from track to track. You got that going for you. Yeah. So yeah, we don't have any. We don't. Who wouldn't any, like that? Yeah, you don't have any reprieve from it. You know, all, all these guys with these late model Mopars and stuff with the AC on and all of that. It's just ridiculous. It's way too easy. Cruise and control. I mean, come on. It's not Las Vegas ninety degree heat. It's Midwest ninety degree heat. Yeah, so. yeah. Some days it's just so humid, and you're just you wake up and start sweating, and you just sweat all day, and you never right. You, you never take a leak. You never never do nothing but sweat all day, and then you do it again the next day and the next day. But but after that first one, I told Glenn, my buddy that that's my navigator and my co-pilot. He, uh, I told him, I said, this is the last time we're ever doing this. This is this. It was fun. I get it, but I'm one and done, man. And then, and then the next, uh, that was 17. And then they, they came close enough to home. And by 2019, they, they, um, they announced the tracks and I'm like, Oh man, they're right here. I could sleep at home one night. Right. And so I, so I entered that one and we do that one. And then, and then COVID hit and they didn't have it. And then after COVID, the next one, it's, it's so much time lapses between races you forget how much work it was and how, <laughs> for how, sure how, how beat down you were. And you just remember all the good times and you see the, the magazine, you know, the magazine comes out or something comes online and, and these people are all fired up and I'm like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to join this group again and do it again. And just end up, I don't know how many more I'm going to do because it's, 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 a, it's a lot of work, yeah. but I can see why these, guys, everybody, these people get addicted to it. I mean, there's people from New Zealand and Australia and oh, they're all- shipping cars over or shipping themselves over and buying cars here just to participate. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like, why? And you think and people go, well, how much money do you win doing this? And I'm like, nothing. Zip. Right. It actually cost it cost five hundred dollars just to enter. Right. Like, right. What? Why would anybody want to even do this? I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but once you do it, it's it's a no-brainer, man. <laughs> and now you guys, you guys being VW guys and Midwest guys, right? So it's not like you guys are in the mecca of air-cooled VW stuff, and then you guys nope. are in the heartland oh, of no, Hot Rodville. You know, that's, that's I'm sure we're getting laughed at when we pull up. Yeah, I mean, we're best friends and live two hours apart. Yeah, <laughs> and, well, and now, and, and so let me ask this question: So when you guys first showed up to your first event? What is the is there is there any other Volkswagens there with you guys? Oh no, not when I showed up. Prescott was the only other one that I remember. Maybe a water cooled guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no air cooled. No air cooled. So it, Prescott and I have been the only air cooled cars in the Midwest that I have well, Richie, that I've Richie seen. Webb is, is, oh yeah, Richie and James. James drove up. Yep, yeah, he came from Alabama, and Richie comes. Yep. Richie Webb from from the UK. He's he's the guy, you know, and. um He's done a bunch of them, but he is so funny and so, so uh, crazy. I mean, he sets the thing on kill for every pass, and he never finishes. I mean, I mean, he'll 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 blow it up the first day and try to get it to fix, and you know, and then and, and then he'll go the next day with it half running, and 
try again and try again. And, and he puts, I mean, all the way from the UK. Well, actually he's based out of, um, uh, California. Yeah. You know, the, the car, ne- the car never leaves the country. Um, the, he does. And the difference uh, between him and us is our kill isn't nearly as, you know, wild as his kill. And what's his he, kill is in, what, what's he running? Uh, uh, that car's run nine forties in drag week trim, hadn't it? Yeah, I think it's gone eight nineties uh, on on E eighty five. Yeah, uh, and he, he converted. I think he converted it over to race gas because E eighty five was not not the hot setup. These guys around E eighty five they chew up so much fuel that they're constantly looking for fuel. It's all you know, and you can't hardly when you get like four or five miles to the gallon. You that's a lot, you know. That's a lot to drag around with you. Oh, and yeah. here we are, me and, me and Chuck get 25 miles to the gallon. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's actually a joke. I mean, I don't even change the timing in the car from from racetrack to street. I There's not a lot different with the car between me going to get groceries and go to cruise nights during the summer and putting it on uh, uh, Drag and Drive Week. Well, and that's, yeah. and that's yeah. what I was thinking. I was almost thinking you just bring a, a set of really tall tires for the street for like the highway drive yeah. and, and have some drag. The, and the, the tire some... diameter would, wouldn't make as much of a difference as you would think. I mean, I've gone taller tires, shorter tires. It has to be such a drastic change that to make a difference on how fast you're going to cruise on the highway. The right. We just drive highway. a little slower. <clears throat> yeah, we drive a little slower and, and with the 82, what are we at? Three grand or so. Yeah, I was with the 89. I, we, depending on where we were, we were between 32 and 3,400 RPM. That was, was where yeah, we're was going, usually we're, hang going, out. we're going at a good clip, 65, yeah. 70. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not enough to miss a turn here or there. So, yeah, and, and we're not in anybody's, we're not going to get run over by a semi or anything. So that's, that's the main thing. So obviously, yeah, the, I don't want to. The difference of drag week and and uh, power tours is pretty substantial. But give me an outline of like what the schedule is, what the schedule and distance is for one of these drag for one of these uh, uh, sick weeks or drag week. They oh. usually shoot for eight hundred miles, give or take. I know that sick summer last year was a little was shorter than that, mm-hmm. but like hot rod hot rod drag week, I think they shoot for a thousand miles is what they're yeah, kind of yeah. what they're kind of yeah. going for. Yeah, they so you were doing two, you know, two fifty a day plus waiting all day at a racetrack, get your pass in, switch your car over and hit the road. And now when they have yeah. these at the drag events, is it open to the locals too to come on track or is it just the people in the event? No. no, no, it's just the people in the event get to go down the track. But I mean, they bring in quite a bit of spectators. You yeah. just, uh, yeah. it's thousands, depending on yeah. what track. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the middle of the week, early in the morning. These tracks are never open at that time. Right. So we're, we're never, we're never in the way of any, even if they have an evening program, we're gone by then. We're, right, the place is half empty by noon, so because people make their pass and boogie, man, you got to get on the road. Because if you have issues or troubles on the road, you don't want it to happen at midnight. Right. You want and they don't. You know, it's it's not two hundred and fifty miles on the interstate. They give you three or four checkpoints that are off the beaten path down little two lane roads, and you miss a turn here or there, and pretty soon you're. 45 minutes behind schedule. So you've got to kind of follow along on your, it's like a road rally on top of a drag race and everything else. Yeah. It's like a scavenger hunt. uh, Oh yeah. (laughs) Uh, And it's neat. It's like a rolling, it's like a rolling circus. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's, you know, like power tours, a bunch of show cars cruising through these little towns. It's kind of neat, but it's way different when on, Hot Rod Drag Week, when we roll through a little town and everybody's got, you know, loud cars and, and they all want you to do a burnout and, and you know, they, they come out of there, they stop whatever they're doing to come out and watch all these, because there's 300 plus cars going to roll through this little town yeah. in the middle of the week, you know, early in the morning or, you know, midday and they, they don't know why or what's going on, but they're going to watch the whole thing. So it's, it's, and usually the checkpoint is in one of these little towns. Yeah. So the whole, we, we take over the whole town for a couple of hours. And, and it's not, uh, it's not nothing. There's, there's these guys two hours before 
or making a mid to high six second pass in the quarter mile in their, you know, whatever, and uh, took it back to the pits, switched over tires, hooked up their trailer and boogied on down the road. And now is there, yeah. is there classes in this event? Well, there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a laundry list of classes depending on what, uh, what you have for engine or suspension or yeah, body and, and, and hot rod, hot rod has different classes than sick. Sick the mag has different, like at sick the mag, we're actually in a Volkswagen class. I mean, oh, they, really? they, 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 they group us in with the gassers. So it's gassers versus VWs. And Chuck actually won, you know, hit won the VW end of that class during six summer. So that, but in, in hot rod drag week, we're in the catch all class, the 10th, right, like, like street eliminator or something, street modified yeah, or it's, something it's like over that. Over a hundred cars. Right. In one class. Oh, wow. And it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool to see though. When, you know, every, every night they spit out the spreadsheet on, on how fast you were and where you, where you fit in your class. Right. Mm-hmm. And the Volkswagens, <laughs> me and Chuck are in the middle of the, you know, we do pretty not, good, yeah. We do. We, I, I'm impressed with ourselves because you know <laughs> the break is 10 seconds, and there's a lot. You know, there's a hand now. There's probably 50 10 old cars, right? Right. And and those cars are nine second cars slowing down to 10 to, to be in they the don't. class. Yeah, because they don't fit in any other class. Mm-hmm. So, but then there's us running 11s and 12s, and we're 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 not. You know, there's 100 cars in that class. We're not towards the bottom. We're in the middle. Right, we're, for sure. We're beating these, you know, big blocks with turbos on it, and and it's just I'm pretty proud of how we do. If you actually look at that spreadsheet, I'm like, man, because you're driving on the road and you're looking at a car, and you're like, man, it's loud. It's got rubber, wall to wall rubber, and you know, it's got a big block in it. And you're like, man, that thing's got to be really fast. We get to the track, the thing's barely running a 13. Really? And I'm like, yeah, it, it happens all the time. It's you know, a street legal, a street legal. 11 second car is is a rarity it's not you know every car that's uh, say a muscle car you know a 60s or 70s muscle car especially um, a non-turbo car yeah yeah yeah, especially an all-motor car i mean geez it's 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 yeah so everything that's faster than us is usually got nitrous or or something you know and uh yeah the all-motor cars are 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 pretty slow for the most part you know uh, you know just because you got a uh, 69 Camaro with a big block in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that fast. The car bone stock. So you guys surprise a bunch of those people that are out there at, uh, at the drag and drop events with respect to, um, you know, when they see the Volkswagen, they're like, Oh yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, they, 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 I think we they get the Snickers let... on day one and by day two, three and four, we, you know, more people are starting, Hey, that's quicker than I thought it was or what well, the, yeah, what kind yeah, of motor yeah, is that? Or, yeah, it's usually when Chuck goes up to the line and all the photographers stop what they're doing and whip their cameras around because Chuck's going to pull a big wheelie stand. Yeah, I was, and I was after, noticing that. After, after the first day, they, it's, it's game on. And we try, I mean, Chuck, me and Chuck try to uh, stage ourselves up together. It, it's Because I talk to them and like, oh, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is all about the photo op. It doesn't matter who I'm racing. I'm not racing the guy in the other lane. So if we can work it out where we're in the staging lanes pretty close together, I'll mm-hmm. talk to the starting crew and, and say, hey, man, I want to run Chuck heads up, you know, together. And, oh, yeah, just pull over here and wait for him and blah, blah, blah. And I bet nine and times out of ten there we get to do it. So it works yeah, out great. GW yeah, side here, by side. Me and, yeah, me and Chuck or me and one of the other Volkswagen guys like uh, – James or yeah. yeah yeah I'll 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 say hey man let's let's go into the lanes together so we can try to make a pass together and and uh, it they love it you know um, sick the mag all them guys they they love it when when it's a better looking photo you know they want two gassers taken off together or two do whatever they don't want a super fast car and a super slow car because it, it's it it just doesn't look as cool you know yeah. no. It just doesn't. So, you know, and after the first time I did this, after the first Dragon Drive event, I'm like, this is all about the, it's not about, nobody wins. There's right. no winners. Everybody, everybody wins, you know? So it's, it's like they, it's more about the fun aspect of it than the actual racing 
you know, we're in a race kind of. <laughs> right. right. Everybody kind of has a number they want to hit or a goal they want to attain, but you're not so much racing the other guys in your class as you might have, you know, you want to finish the week out or you want to, you know, you want to have a certain average. And so you're working at that all week long. And if you get one bad pass, it screws your whole week up. If you don't have time to fix your problem, get back in the lanes and get another pass in before it's time to pack your junk up and go to the next track. Right. It can mess your whole week up. Yeah, like like my car, I was struggling. The one year I was struggling to run at twelve, yeah. because the the cam went flat, and I was having traction problems. And I don't think we ran a twelve until like one of the last tracks. We got the we got everything dialed in where it was it was gonna make it. And and the cam was so flat. I mean, it was missing, <laughs> it was missing an eighth of an inch off the lobes, oh, wow. off a two lobe. And it was, but luckily it was the intakes and not the exhaust. Yeah. So the as long as the air can get out, right. the, the motor will still there. Yeah, if, it, if you if you rub the bumps off the exhaust lobes, it takes in all this air. It's got nowhere for it to you know nowhere for it to go. The motor overheats. It runs like garbage. So I I melt you know I nursed that motor through the week and try you know so if we finally ran a twelve ninety something or whatever it was and I was all ecstatic and everybody's going what's y'all happy about that this car's way faster than that and I'm like hey man the way our week is going this is a win right <laughs> so but you could be like me and leave idle jets loose and drop us you know add a second yeah. to your et because you were not paying attention in the pitch yeah that was the only <laughs> race there i was faster than chuck and then the rest of the week he just walked away from me it was just so <laughs> it was so dumb but you know okay. you know live and learn man and that's the other thing by friday or you start at monday monday at 8 30 there's a one and only driver's meeting right 8.30, that's the last time you can see your truck and trailer or anything you brought with you. You have to load up all your stuff after the driver's meeting, and you're, you've are you got to make your pass, and you're on the road. Mm-hmm. And then as the week goes on, you get less and less sleep. You have less and less energy. And by Friday, you can't even think straight. I don't even – I don't know what day it is. I don't know where I am. Uh, right. It's, it's – it's, 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 you know, I've got minimal amount of sleep and, and all – yeah, and you're – you know, it's just amazing. By Friday, I'm like, oh, where am I? What you're do I done. have to do? Oh yeah. So, and you're also you driving to- down the road, and every every little noise you hear is like, oh, is that what's going to put me on the side of the road today? Uh, yeah. What, what yeah, was what was that? Shake or shimmy. And, <laughs> oh, now it's right. pulling, and like I got a tire going down, and ah, it's just the road. <laughs> the road right. is crazy. You're, you're trying to avoid potholes and railroad tracks, and. I mean, some of these places they take you are like out in Iowa. Yeah, they in the gravel put, roads. They don't. They don't put any lines. There's no fog line. There's no passing. It's just. It's just pavement. And you're like, okay, the, are we even? I've I've gone down alleys that are have more traffic signs on it, and and you're just out in the middle of nowhere. And like, I, I can't imagine going down this road at midnight, pulling a trailer with my you know six second car and missing this turn. Because you know, it's pitch black, right. and if you don't have some decent lights on your so-called drag car, you know I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, this is dangerous. People are going to get hurt. I mean, right. and it happens. You hear the next day, like Alex Taylor, miss went over these railroad tracks too fast and flipped her trailer over. Oh wow! And it was wow. a big, and it was a big fiasco. And it's we're you we're either crazy or dumb because we've got the smallest car. And we don't pull trailers. We just pack all our stuff inside the car and hope for the best. Yeah, yeah, we just touch, yeah, we just touch touch it. <coughs> now, what do you it all in there? Nope. And 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 hit the road. You know. <laughs> What's your list of stuff that you bring? Like so, so if somebody wants to do something like this, I mean, do you? you I mean, you got to have. <laughs> what are the slowest cars that run out there? I mean, now my car on top of on top of everything else, I have all four tires behind. I took out the back seat, and I keep all four tires behind the back seat. Oh, you uh, have the, all the spare Urcos in the back? I, I I take the back seat out, and I, I stack them up behind the passenger and driver and then pack everything else around the tires. So at each racetrack, I do a four-tire change twice a day. Wow. So yeah, then you've got to have a jack. you got to have tools. You're going to bring... Stuff. 
yeah, you're going to bring whatever spare parts you think you might need and then bring a few more. And chances are you might not even bring the right stuff. And you're hoping your buddy might have similar stuff so that you can trade back and forth. Or, or you're hoping that you can like, where were we? Somewhere in, somewhere in um, Illinois, right? When my field. Oh yeah. Out. Close enough to a, we were within a half hour of a, of a auto parts store and yeah. uh yeah, yeah, so so we're we're driving on the interstate, like okay, cars yeah, whizzing by at eighty miles an hour. Yeah, I'll send blah 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 blah. I'm pumping it, <laughs> it's happening, and I run a Holly Blue pump for some reason, and uh, that's I I go I don't think I, I turn the key and I said go look at the fuel pressure gauge and it's at zero and I'm like well fuel pump so I go up the fuel pump's in the front where the spare tire well is and I I open it. I open it up and I grab it and the thing's red hot and I'm like, oh, this thing's garbage. And uh, in years past, I have brought an, an extra pump, an used pump, but it would bolt in. And uh, this year I didn't do it because I never used it in the past. <laughs> so the year you don't bring your spare parts is the year you need it. So we, you know, we all got on our phones, found uh, I think it was an advanced auto parts, had a, a blue pump or a red pump, whatever I wanted. I said, hold it, we're on our way. So we right. left. We left my car with my navigator Glenn and and Chuck's dad, who was his co-pilot. We left them with my car, and we took off. And we yeah. And you can't. You're not allowed to tow the car anywhere to fix it. You pretty much, unless it's extremely dangerous, you have to fix it where it dies. Really? Yeah. 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 And so he, yeah. we were on the side of the interstate, and uh, that's where we changed fuel pump. Yeah. I, I mean, we, you know trucks whizzing past and it was what 90 degrees that day or something. Oh, it, it was, yeah it was, it was bad it was miserable and glenn had his little battery powered fan for chuck's dad and, and i'm like well this, it is what it is we just got to get so we, we rolled into this little town and got the pump and and got back put it in started it up did a little wiring and <laughs> back on the road down the road we went well, yeah down the road we went so now what's the ideal setup with respect to a car you believe to take on something like this? Like if money were no object and you're wanting to build a Volkswagen for something like this, like what, what's your, what's your build recipe based on the experiences that you've had? And I, I guess you got to decide what, <laughs> are you a turbo guy or are you an all motor guy? And then you gotta, then you, once you choose that path, then you can choose more. And that's my question. Yeah, I don't why, think, why do you guys do all motor and not do it? I mean, turbo is the fastest, the easiest way to get, big power and also have it drivable sure yeah sure. but yeah but neither of us are, are turbo guys <laughs> right yeah you and know? i mean like, you gotta you have to build a car that you're comfortable with working on it on the side of the road you better know what every bolt size is what every nuance is of your setup yeah um to be successful you want to like richie webb he doesn't care he's got more money then he knows what to do with, so that's why he does these things. And he he's built some crazy. Everything's a one-off part, and all his one-off parts break, and he's he he doesn't end up finishing the week. And he doesn't have any problem with not finishing the week. Right. That's his deal. You know, if you want to finish the week, you better have parts on your car that you can go to O'Reilly's and buy. Yeah, and uh, not these one-off parts that some guy in England made. So I looked at finishing six summer and realized you know, that nobody else had finished a drag week quicker than I had. So I would like to keep doing that. And if I wanted to be at that level in turbo or nitrous, mm -hmm. the, uh, I would have to change a lot of stuff on the car. Transmission would have to be changed. I'd yeah. have to put a full, uh, a roll bar in the car, probably a cage because my car is not going to go nine seconds, you know, the, and, and that's where you're going to need to be. You're going to need to be. So if you put a turbo at the top of the class of a turbo class, you're, you're in a different need class to run nines. altogether. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, yeah, see, to consider yeah. it a success for some people. Yeah, I see James with his Gia. Uh, that's an all uh, turbo Gia with an intercooler, and he he hand fabricated that whole car, mm -hmm. and he knows hey. that car inside and out, and he's fast. He runs tens with a you know turbo Gia. Now, what's and, what's uh, James' permit. last name? James what? Holt. Uh, Holt. Holt. I think it's I think it's Holt. H. Yeah, we we can get it to you. I I just, I'm sorry. That's a that's a that's a guy you should talk to. Man, he's a he's a master tech 
at a at a Nissan dealership. Yeah. And the dude is super smart, super smart. Yeah. And uh, and fearless. I mean, he does all these dragon drive events alone. <laughs> and he do, and he does them in a, in a turbo gear. Yeah. Yeah. Six, yeah Sixty four gear. And what's he running yeah, time wise? Um, um, he regularly clicks off eleven thirty. So I think he was just out testing because he's doing sick week in Florida here coming up in what uh, a little over a month. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got a new uh, he's got a new engine together for that. So. Right. Um, I think it's a 10 second car, I'm sure, with the right prep, you know. But it's 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 a neat car and he's yeah, he's 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 the guy to talk to if you I mean he And he takes it extra with. conservative on the drives. He oh, yeah. he is he, gonna he is gonna drive it fifty or fifty five so his car stays nice and cool, doesn't doesn't matter to him how long it takes him to get there. Mm-hmm. And he's cool with that and he's been successful with that, so Right, he doesn't re- usually roll with us track to track, and there's there's I've I've tried to go with other people, even non Volkswagen people, just to stay, you know, you know there's 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 power in numbers, right? To just stay in with case the group. something goes wrong, yeah. But some of these guys they either go too fast or too slow, you know, um, or they just break down too much. <laughs> now, when you said <laughs> now, now, these- now, Chuck, when you said you were one of the fastest cars that finished the whole week. So you're saying cars for a VW? Oh, for VW. For a VW. Yeah, for for yeah. an all-motor VW. Yeah. So, which is a small group. So it's not. It's not like you're really bragging. There's not the, a lot yeah. of us that have done it. So. What's the biggest turn? What's the biggest turnout you guys have had? Um, probably yeah. drag week, wasn't it? Yeah, with, drag week. With, yeah, that drag week was 383 cars or something. It was crazy. It, but we had Richie and James and you and me. We had four air cools. Yeah, Donovan didn't hit that one. And I think that Sick Week coming up is going to have more than that. With Volkswagens? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because all the Florida guys are going. Well, that would be, the, I mean, hopefully, and, and that's that's part of the thing. I mean, really the, the event for these is is get people out in their Volkswagens driving them. <clears throat> and after doing. I don't under, I don't, I, yeah, I don't understand why more Volkswagen guys don't do it. I mean, well, I didn't think I could to be, you know, yeah, I thought that I thought the car would overheat. I had never really before you convinced me to go on drag week 22, I would drive it 30, 30 minutes, maybe an hour at the most. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm like, well, it's just going to get hot. It's not going it, to it can't do that. And you said, well, let's just give it a shot. And so I, I did. <laughs> and I, I didn't change anything. I just showed up at the track and let her rip, you know, like we didn't right. even back anything off. Right. So. And it, it's like, it's, it's the, um, More. The, the drag and drive stuff is like, I think it's perfect for Volkswagens. Right. They're, they're, they're more simplistic. There's less, it, it's not going to boil over. Right. Right. When it overheats, you know, um, if you put enough oil coolers on any air cooled motor, it's going to stay going. I mean, yeah. I got, I, I run an you know, electric fan on an external oil cooler plus the stock oil cooler. And I do less than that. So, you yeah. know, there's, I just got, I have just the, uh, just the remote oil cooler with the electric fan. I don't have a cooler in the fan shroud anymore. So, yeah, see, I got both and, and like, it's never, it's never like, holy crap, we're boiling the oil. I mean, it gets up to 210, 220, but right. I mean, we're going 90 miles, we're going down the interstate at, you know, it's 90 degrees out. Right. So, I mean, you know, we can just, all you got to do is back down a little. Hit, go from 70 to 65 or 65 to 60 miles an hour. The oil temp just plummets. As soon as we get off the freeway, the oil temp just plummets. The coolers do their job and it's all good. So Now, maybe we're, maybe we're too scared to run head temp gauges, but, you know, we don't, we don't watch that. So we don't have to worry about head temps. Right. <laughs> no. What, what you don't know won't hurt you. Right, and, and until you shoot the spark plugs out of the head, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> right, yeah. So, so, and, and my one motor has super flows and everything. You can't put super flows on the street. I, dude, I drive thousands of miles in the middle of summer with super flows. And Not what, a problem. And what, do you run, what were you running for compression on the super flows? 11 to 1. 11 to 1. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you had as much tin as you could fit around those heads? Um, no, I think... Uh, Originally, it had one of those those aluminum Superflow tins, uh-huh. and 
and then I cut I cut sheet metal ones. You take single pour ones and you start hacking on them to make them fit, and that's what was on them. But yeah, the heads are fine. I mean, yeah, they. You, it's probably not ideal. You know, mm-hmm. it probably won't live to be you know hundred thousand miles on it. But for what we're doing, the seats don't fall out, and that's your biggest issue, right? Right. So, but the bigger um, the bigger cam you have, the more compression you can get away with on on that anyway. You you're not going to run eleven to one with a with a 110 cam, it's going to cause you problems. So it's yeah. a, kind of a, a balancing combo. act. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a combo. You need a high compression cam, a, a cam that's that's ground for a lot of compression, and just let it all do its job. And it, yeah, it's, that's another thing that, that just, like Chuck said, people are blown away. That you can just buy this stuff over the phone and build a 11-second car. They're like, yeah. what? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So they now, don't understand. They, they don't get it. Both of your Prescott, you obviously built your motor. Chuck, who built your motor? I did. So you built your own motor, even in the middle of yep. nowhere, uh, Illinois, where it's not like you've got machine shops at your beck and call right around the corner and everything's super uh, easy. You, you got to mail stuff back and forth. Or when I had a, a issue with the case, I drove the case up to Prescott. You know, since he's a machinist, we checked it all out and. Yeah, I'm going a different route, route but right around the corner, it's two hours away. <laughs> right. right. But you do what you got to do. I mean, yeah, I built a gearbox for both of our cars. And like I said, Chuck's is on the stand now. Um, it's going to be another 412. We, we we blew the 412 out of it at the uh, Milan, or not Milan, uh, Martin, Michigan. At oh, yeah, the, in the fall. Yep. In Back fall. in October, blew up yeah, the so trans. Yeah, it just scattered the ring and pinion. So, so it's a brand new. A brand new Rhino case, brand new 412. But that um, ring and pinion had lived a hard life for 15 years. Yeah. So yeah, you can't yeah, complain. Yeah. So now, yeah. what's the ideal setup? Someone wants to get into this racing. Your advice, based on the years that you guys have been doing this, like, what are the must-haves? What's the motor combo you think works great? What What are the do's and don'ts? And definitely don't do this if you're thinking of that. Like, things that you see people do where you think they think it's helpful, but it would actually work to don't them. show up at the track with an untested car and expect <laughs> to finish the week. Yeah, yeah. That's put what put a that. put a little time into testing out whatever you decide to choose, and make sure you're comfortable with the car and and know what to expect out of it before you show up. Because at the track, yeah, you're you're not getting practice runs. Nope. No, you're. We try. Ideally, one pass, you're done for that day. There's sometimes when you got to, you know, something doesn't go right, you're going to have to make a second one, hopefully not a third one. But um, ideal situation is you're one and done every day. Yeah, because you don't have time. That, like the next time you're going to be able to make a pass, it might be three hours from now. And now, and that's three hours. You, three especially hours since we're the, the slower cars, they the faster cars generally will get more chances at the racetrack. Right. So us being in the slower pack, we're going to have to set for hours. If we if we screw up the uh, settings on our first pass, then yeah, your press got right. It, it's going to be two or three hours before you get another shot. Yeah. Now, what's the what is the ideal drivetrain setup to do something like this? I like a 2332 with IDAs, and you're going to swing axle probably is a little, you know, that's going to be up to whatever kind of car you have. And people are going to, I like a 412. Prescott's gone back and forth between a 412 and a 388, so that's kind of personal preference and yeah, depending on how much your car weighs way. and how it leaves the line. Yeah, and that traction, and I guess it's how it's set up. I was faster with a 388 than a 412. I thought I'd put a, I built a gearbox identical to Chuck's, everything. Yeah. And and my car went slower. And it's just because I don't have the traction of the slicks to, to make a 412 work. But a 388, the tires would break loose, but with all that gear, it didn't matter. It just, it just spun them enough to get the car rolling. Yeah. And with a, four, with a 412, it just blazed the tires. I mean, zero hookup. Now with the, so three, with the 388. And the difference you know, between the 388 and the 412, what was the RPM on the highway? Well, I had the same. You get a couple hundred speed. out of it. That's it. Yeah, but I switched the fourth gears. With the 388, I had an 82. With the 412, I had a 77. Right. So, so you, similar, you, yeah. 
you can buy a 77 for it, which isn't a factory gear. It's a made up gear. Uh, so I bought one from Weddle brand new. And I says, well, that's going to be my 412 fourth gear is this 77 fourth. And, uh, and it, it's almost identical, you know, numbers wise. Final drive ratio. Yeah. Yeah. Final drive is the same as a 388 and a 82. Huh. So, the but RPM that jump power. from third to fourth makes it oh, where you are it, not going to use four gears on the racetrack. That it's okay. it it'll bog the motor down. You'll lose a lot of ET if you try to shift into fourth. Yeah. So we are stuck. We're stuck with uh, three gear race cars basically. Yeah, and my car is different with the 388 because I got an aftermarket main shaft with a t- uh, 221 second. So I go from a right. 221 second to a 132 third, and that, that's a pretty big step. Now, it's it's great. First and second are great, and then I go from second to third, and it's like, wah. And what about a bird five-speed, something like that? See, well, I've, built, I've built enough of those to not not trust the the um, the design of them for, in a drag racing application. It, 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 talk to anybody that has a bird ice speed and ask them if they drag race it you know with slicks and they're like i only know i know clinton is in michigan but um i don't i don't have any i've never owned one i you know all i've heard is hearsay about it so i'm not i I don't have one way or the other only that they're heavier the length of the main shaft it's so long and everything's so long it's like man nothing's really supported any more than the factory you know bearings Right. It's like, man, it's asking a lot of all of that. Right. And, uh, and, and like I built, so right now me and Chuck have a, a shared spare transmission. Mm-hmm. So if you, so if either of us have an issue, boom, next, you know, spare box is all ready to rock, ready to go. Um, and it's going to be, you know, it's, I think it's, it's going to be the same ratios as Chuck has in his car right now. So I, I have, I have the gearbox. No, I don't have the gearbox. Oh no, that's the one I'm going to put in the car. So the one I just finished is going to go in my. It's the 388, and that's going back in my car. And um, then the 412 that was in my car, that's going to be our spare box. And then uh, and right now I'm building the gearbox for Chuck's car with the brand new Rhino case, and and an 82 fourth, and all, some of his original parts, but. Uh, some and some didn't survive the the ring and pinion explosion, so right. I, I changed right. some of it. You know, the, the pinion bearing and things like that 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 had to be changed out. And now I'm waiting for bearings from Weddell to finish it out, and then I can put that back together. I was hoping to have it done for the holidays here, but Weddell's I don't know if they they're on vacation for the holidays or not. So, you know, I've ran a four twelve for so long that. I guess it's stubbornness, if nothing else, that I haven't at least tried 388. But the 412 has always worked good enough for me for so long that I haven't seen a real need to to change it. Well, yeah. And then I think a 412 is a good compromise for a street car, for an all-motor, an all-motor 12-second street bug. I think a 412 is a good, it's, it's, it's not. You don't need the strength. Of the, the only reason anybody runs a 388 is for the strength. Right. For a heavier it's, car, but it, a heavier car moves slower. So I could see where a 388 would be more useful in a lighter car. Yeah. It, you know. It's yeah. Super, so like, you know, a, drag, a drag only car. Yeah. Everybody's running 388. It's just dumb not to. And you can make up the final drive with the, the gearbox part of it. You know. Yeah. You run a different. You run a 411 first gear. Or whatever. And uh, you can make it all up just to use the strength of the 388. But now we're kind of, we're you know, we're straddling the, you know, it's it's all a compromise because you got three gears. Right. What which 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 three you want to use? You yeah. know. <laughs> right. Now, it's, uh, it, what about with are any so none of these events? I noticed that the 666 that they're planning to do uh, this next year is a bunch of uh-huh. eight, is it a bunch of eighth mile tracks? I think it is. I think it's. I think it's all eighth mile tracks. Now, yeah. would yeah. It, do you believe Volkswagen would have a greater? They'd be much more competition in an eighth mile track. Oh, yeah. it'd be way easier to do that event in a VW in an eighth mile yeah, than compared it, to it, a quarter it, mile. Yeah, it'd absolutely do better because a quarter mile, 
we're just we're running out of steam. I right. mean, it's. Uh, I mean, we could even put a crazier third gear in. And, right. So wind uh, up, wind it out in third gear in the eighth and, mile. Yeah, wind out third gear in the eighth mile. It would. It would. You should. You should easily run seven fifties, low sevens. I know that um, the eighth mile, the two eighth mile events that I did this year. Yeah seemed like a breeze compared now granted i blew up transmission but that was on starting line had nothing to do with the length of the racetrack right but um it seems like it's it's easier on the car you're not winding the motor out forever in third gear that second eighth mile and what were you running in the eighth my car will run right on that 750 line it's gone 744 earlier this summer in the eighth, mm-hmm. but give or t- it's, it's in that, you know, right about seven fifty mark. We were dialing in seven fifty in October. And what do your guys cars yeah. weigh? Well, with me in the car, it was what? Six, 1690, I think. So the car is, uh, car is 1500 pounds. So it's, yeah, my car's about my car's about a hundred pounds heavier. I, I I think I'm seventeen something with me in the car, seventeen eighty. So and you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at it. Like it's got upholstered door panels, carpet, headliner. Yeah. Yeah. If you um, looked at our cars, you would think mine's way lighter because it's got it's got it, yours looks metal. like a race car. Yeah, it's got it's got sheet metal door panels and no interior, and but mine's got a. Oh, it's got half a cage in it. Right. And, and I've just got a harness bar. Yeah. And, and, and I got, I have long axles instead of short axles. Um, I got heavier wheels. Um, there's a couple other determining factors. I have, I have steel. It's a narrowed axle beam, but it's, it's all steel. Right. And, and that's, uh, and those are weights. That's, that's me weighing the car um, across the scales after the finish line where when I race the car, I don't have a back seat or a passenger seat. So that's not street weight. That's right. not driving down the road weight. That's we pulled the back seat and the passenger seat out to make a pass and then put it all back in. Yeah, and in my car, same thing. We pull a seat out. We pull the passenger seat out. I don't run the rear deck lid. It, it has a real W deck lid, which, if you don't know, it's kind of heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't run that deck lid. Um you know, a couple other little things to lighten the car up, but it's 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 not a lot. I mean, but it's something, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, but they're all steel cars. We have, I mean, I think you have fiberglass rear fenders, but I've got four steel fenders and steel hood, and I don't yeah. know why they're so light. Yeah, I, I I only have fiberglass, but they're two inches wider, so I don't know. So how that much adds back in. Yeah. yeah. So, but other than that, yeah, it's all steel, steel hood, steel everything. Uh, and and then the sunroof cars, you know, my they, car they add weight. Yeah, cars. yeah, that's an extra. That's got to be fifty pounds. Now, with these cars on, on the highway, how are they handling on the highway? I mean, are they, are they tracking pretty straight? Kind of twitchy. But it's, it's not your favorite thing to drive on the highway, or you guys have dialed them in to drive no. on the highway good too. No, I, I don't know. Either have been in it so long that I don't notice it, but you you just put a finger on the steering wheel and send it down the road. You really don't have to worry about it. Now it's not. Super comfortable after a couple hundred miles, but you know it's not a new you know it's not a new car either. So how many new yeah, cars it's, it's, are on these events? Yeah, more and more. It's I mean everybody's having fun, so you can't complain about the people that have the new cars. Right. But it's not it's not one of those things that impresses anybody. I think it's just I'm glad that the guy with the brand new you know, such and such is having fun, but he's running his air conditioning in the staging lanes and then pulls up, makes a pass, and goes on down the road. And what yeah, are those cars running? control and all of this. What are those cars Pretty typically fast. running? I mean, there's some, um, like like a Mopar or a, you know, a yeah. coyote-powered like, Mustang. And that's, a, you know, that's an 11-second car easy. You know? That's nuts. And it's... And it's pretty stock because everybody has to run drag tires. Okay, you got to run drag slicks or drag radials or some sort of drag tire, some soft um, compound tire. They uh, won't let yeah, you run so, with a full straight radial on the track. Right. No. Yeah. They, they all that does is chew up the starting line. So, um, and it's it's like I said, it's a no prep deal. So to keep the starting line relatively nice, they just outlaw street tires. 
because it wouldn't really be it wouldn't really be you know fair or safe to the guys that are running six and seven second passes to have somebody come up there and eat a bunch of rubber off the starting line and then you know they just sit there and spin the tires right right and we're just you know there's there's a show and then there's a show okay we're part of the big show but the the main the main reason people are going to see this they they want to see a six or seven second street car yeah they're not there they're not there it's impressive to see us you know they want to see a really fast 200 mile an hour pass i mean somebody's running 200 miles an hour in a street car something they just drove to an ice cream stand for a checkpoint it's i mean like a fox bodied mustang con- a fox body convertible mustang that looks pretty much stock on the outside uh-huh. with a black convertible top just lays down a 680 at, at 215 or something wow yeah yeah, it's just amazing. It's and it's 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 you know it's it, people. Don't, you could tell these you can tell these stories to people, and they might be gear hard, be, be gearheads. They might not be. They don't believe you. They, they think you're exaggerating, or you got your facts wrong. Right. They're thinking eighth mile times or something. Yeah, they're thinking eighth mile times, or this is a full tilt drag car, or whatever. And, it might be, uh, but it drove two hundred miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just yeah, it just drove through the countryside. So you guys are, uh, are you guys are not going to do the sick uh, sick week. I'm not going. I w- I would love to do it, but um, my car doesn't have an engine or transmission in it. The engine's sitting here on the engine stand without any cylinder heads, and Prescott has my transmission. Yeah, his his gearbox is on the stand right now. So are you doing some uh, some new stuff on there, on your on your next setup? I went with a different set of uh, CB heads uh, and with a little bigger intake valve. We'll see how we'll see how that changes things. And uh, same cam, same bottom end, just a uh, just different set of cylinder heads. Well, the bottom end got went through when after the. Yeah, after the oil pump fiasco. <laughs> after the oil pump, oil pump sucked up a piece of a piston. Right. Yeah. So the bottom end is, you know, is pretty fresh. It's a, uh, you know, it's a aluminum case with, um, it's nothing fancy. FK eighty nine cam. It's got Molly Power Pack pistons with, with just some regular SEMA Molly barrels. Um, not even fancy lifters. I just put, you know a set of $40 lifters in with the cam. So I'm really, it's nothing. It's not even wedge mated. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chuck is way more, he's way braver than me. I mean, that everything I got is wedge mated and it's got uh, like the motor I just put together with the, with the CB 3200 cam has got my set of my um, tool steel lifters. My, yeah. Set of my tool steel lifters. So, I'm I'm not taking any chances. I want this thing to run the same on Monday <laughs> as it does on Friday, and so, not chase my tail. So now Prescott, we uh, that, that reminds you. So you said you ma- you make some tool steel uh, some tool steel lifters. Yeah, back in the day, I, I got into that after a bunch of flat cams. Everybody went through the same uh, problems for a while there. Nobody could tell you if it was the cam blanks or if it was the lifters material or. or why everybody was having flat cam? They were blaming the oil and the lack of zinc in the oil and the crappy right. break in. Everybody had an excuse why the cam went flat, and I had a bunch of them go flat. They went flat on the dyno, and uh, I'm like, man, this is. And then tool steel lifters were super expensive back then. You, know, you could get the Thorsen ones, and I think they were they were over seven hundred dollars, almost eight hundred dollars, and you had to get them from England or Spain or somewhere. And uh, I says, well, if they're getting seven hundred dollars a set for these tool steel lifters, and um, and and I I I'm a tool and die maker, I can make a set. <laughs> why don't Why don't I investigate that? So I, I drew up some plans to make my own, you know, my own lifters, and I had some prototypes made, and I tested them, and and then, um, you know, I, I tried to sell them, but I, I was only breaking even, even at selling them at. Uh, 360 bucks a set yeah. i was just basically breaking even so the last couple sets i kind of hoarded for myself and and they're for me but i also buy um shag 
Shake 55, Shake Leone, he he makes a tool steel lifter. They're they're nice, they're good, they're they work, they're economical. And then the, the Thorson lifters come down way down in price. So there's no reason not to. You know, I'm talking, they're not forty dollars. They're they're right. still you know they're still three hey, four hundred dollars. My but, Brazilian lifters held up just fine last year. I just looked at them a couple weeks ago when I had the uh, cover off. You know changing the sump so you can you can have your tool steel lifters <laughs> so you've got a uh, set yeah, of 40 dollar lifters on in your motor oh absolutely yeah they might even have been 50 but that might be stretching it yeah yeah See, yeah like i said chuck's way braver than i am and plus i like the fact that i made the lifters and there's definitely something in that for sure i made them i designed them i made them they're in my motor that i built with my own two hands and that's another whole other factor where you got these guys that just buy a car off the showroom and do these drag and drive events. It's, I don't see how much satisfaction you get out of that. Right. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's enjoyable. It's a good time. Yeah. You can, you could do, there's up to, oh, there's over 20 drag and drive events a year that you could travel the country doing. And it'd be easy to do in a brand new car with a warranty, but Try to do this with a car you built, with the engine you built and transmission you built and a car you wired and you had your hand on every nut and bolt on this car and you send that down the track and you send it down the dirt road. There's a lot more satisfaction in that. than We're done done with the weekend. I'm like, man, I actually, I don't care if anybody thinks I accomplished anything, but me personally, when I go to bed at night, I know that. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's all the little things that you did or you, you know, there's a handful of things that I have instead of purchased, you know, you, you make them yourself and there's definitely satisfaction in, in accomplishing that and making something work that you could have bought, but you were either too cheap, stubborn or dumb to buy instead of make yourself. So you guys are going to be doing the next, the next, uh, six summer the next one that comes up yes and yeah, that, where, where is that one going 24. to and from same as it was last year we're just the same tracks just in a different order we're going to start in in byron illinois then we go to the quad cities which is illinois iowa then we go out by uh field of dreams or you know the movie set there's a racetrack out there and we go up by Prescott's at Great Lakes, and then we come back to Byron, Illinois. Yeah. And and the fun part is the last couple of years, my dad has been my co-pilot. Yeah. And he is retired to just driving along in his own car now. Yeah. And my son's going to be my co-pilot and navigator this year. So nice. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's and my awesome. co-pilot is is Chuck's wife. <laughs> yeah. Because I lost my co-pilot due to him uh, coaching uh, Little League. Yeah. And uh, so that that jammed him up, and I'm like, well, and, and, and Chuck's wife wants to go, and I'm like, yeah, you can read a map, you're in. <laughs> now, do you, now, do you guys do any creature comforts inside the car to make it more drive? Because I, I noticed that I think it was on Prescott's car, you had some, it looks like you had some uh, some ear earmuffs in the... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. My this car, car is, is crazy wild. noisy, noisy. Yeah. Are you running solid it's steel loud. mounts on everything? Yeah, solid everything. Yeah, oh, both of us yeah. are, yeah. Uh, now, Prescott, no when, we, when we rode to get a fuel pump, and I took Prescott to get his fuel pump, he's riding in my car, and we can have a regular conversation. Yeah, like, it's... Do that in my car. You don't need radios to communicate in, in my car. I don't know what it is, but, like, there's no... Yeah, creature yeah. comforts, there aren't, there aren't any, really. Yeah. There's no radio. Yeah. We open the wing windows to cool off. Sunroof stays closed because... That sun beating down on you will really cook you. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah. One year we were cruising down the road. It was hot, middle of the day. I had every window. I had the roof open, and all of a sudden, I just started seeing spots. I was dehydrated or whatever, and and uh, I pulled over into a and a, a wayside. You know, actual, we we're on the interstate. And I pulled over in a wayside. I said, I told my buddy Glenn, I says, I, I can't even see straight here. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so between the wind blowing, the hot air blowing on me and me not drinking enough, I just, I, so I pulled over. And as soon as I pulled over into this wayside, I got out of the car. I got a nosebleed. He says, you better sit down. 
I, I laid up against a tree that was, you know, for shade. He ran into the with the, the wayside and, and got some paper towels wet and stuff and came out by me. And I'm like, man, I, we, we need to sit here a little, a little while. I need to drink something. I need to get my bearings back, and then we'll hit the road again. But, yeah, yeah it's, you don't know. You're, you're not taking care of yourself. This is the worst um you know, yeah, yeah, like you, just get, you get you get a meal at the end of the day if you're you know you'll eat yeah. gas station food along the way, maybe yeah. you'll get something at the racetrack, but if you're lucky you'll sit down maybe at a restaurant at the end of the day. Sometimes yeah, right. you're sometimes yeah. you're getting a burger at the Wendy's and taking it back to your hotel room though. Yeah, yeah, it's the the last that we try to do that at the end of each day. It's like okay, we found our hotel room. Let's find something to eat. It's going to be made late. another another successful drive. We we yeah. you know we'll eat the one meal of the day. <laughs> now do you guys bring, at the end? Do you guys bring Octane Booster with you too? We tried that last year, and it was you know we bought the um, VP sells a uh, a can of Octane Booster, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be better than what you buy at the auto parts store, right? And uh, it turns your spark plugs orange, and I think it probably helped a little bit, but we are better off just finding race gas and mixing it in. Yeah, yeah. I, I tried the VP stuff. It, it, I couldn't tell you definitively if it worked or not. I don't know that it makes an ET difference. It might have. It might have made a a knocking difference from you know on the yeah, drive, this, but the stuff wasn't cheap. It was twenty dollars a can. Well, that's why right. I, fig I figured it might make a difference as far as highway drive and stuff like that. Keep it from detonating. Yeah, I'm know, I'm thing. trying this new stuff. This guy we talked. You know, you talked to all these guys on the drag drive and stuff, and what they doing for especially fuel. Fuel is always a conversation starter. Like, what are you driving? You know, what do you got? What are you burning? You know, you burning the eighty five or what are you? You know, what are you running for fuel? You know, some of these guys are running dual fuels. They're running race gas at the track, and you know, or or whatever. So I, I ran into a guy with a, um, it was a, I think it was a Trackhawk, uh, a, a Jeep Trackhawk. Yeah. And I, because we were talking about fuel, he goes, "Here, I tried. You can. Tr you want a can of this stuff?" And I'm like, "Dude, I know how much this costs. I just let me take a picture of the can. I'll buy some when I can. It's online only stuff. It's called Boost Thing. Boost Thing." Yeah, and he says this is the only stuff I've actually bought, and it actually works, and I can actually watch it work because he has his laptop. His laptop can see the knock sensors; it can see the timing curve. So he says with most octane boosters, it's still pulling timing. <clears throat> it might not pull as much timing because that—that's all it does. The knock sensor sees it knocking, and it pulls timing out. That's all it does. It's not magic. Yeah. And he yeah. says with this boost thing stuff. He says it doesn't pull a degree out. It stays dead on. And and if the knock sensor isn't seeing it knocking, it must be working. It's doing something. But right. like Chuck said, it, it, it's impossible to read plugs because your plugs look like you pull them out of a bag of Cheetos. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're orange top to bottom. You can't read them. You can't do nothing with them. So you don't know if it's rich or lean or blown up. And I haven't carried gas in the past, and this coming, this upcoming drag and drive, I'm gonna bring uh, five gallons of race gas, and then if I mix it two to one with with junk pump gas, I'll still be in the low 90s. So I'll, I should, we sh we should be fine if we each carry uh, yeah, well, five gallon jug of some, race gas. We we learned going to Iowa that Iowa doesn't have any high octane fuel. They got nothing. Each right. gas station has, has 87 and diesel. That's it. That's what you they know? got. That's what they got. That's what we got. <laughs> so we got to either pump in 87 and, and and jack it up with, with race gas or octane booster or bring our own fuel. As, and it's just the jaunt from, say, you know, the Twin Cities or the uh, Quad Cities out to the – because this track's in the middle of nowhere. It's the Field of Dreams movie set. It really is in the middle of the cornfields. Really? It's the middle of nowhere. There's nothing out there. I actually had to find an Airbnb just so all of us could stay together because there's no hotels. There's nothing, man. So, so I got a whole house for us to stay in for one night. And um, I talked to the owner of the Airbnb and I told him what we were doing. It just, yeah, I mean, you, you're cool with it. If you're not, that's fine. You, know, you don't right. have to rent it to us. And he goes, no, 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 it sounds fine. 
And uh, it just says it's, it's going to be three Volkswagens. Um, we just need one night to stay. We're just going to sleep and leave, you know. We're not right. partying. You know, it's not going to be a party here or nothing like that. We'll be and too I tired guess, for that. Yeah. I mean, who's got time for partying? <laughs> and, over the, and, and it's just because there's nothing out there when you go out there. Like there's... Yeah, right. So I, yeah, so I yeah, so Now do they do do they have uh like when when you're going to the the drag strip the next day is going to be at, you know, uh more Byron, right? Whatever. Is there a say uh-huh. they, they say, "Oh, we're staying at this hotel. This is the hotel where we've got Yeah. Yeah, like, they give you host hotels, but they sell out like instantaneously. Oh, so people, oh, yeah. people, will, people will reserve a room on speculation even before they you know, before the, the event went on sale, people were yeah, reserving before, hotel yeah, rooms. Yeah. Well, they know that the race is going to be, they don't know what day, but the, you know, they'll, they'll, they haven't announced the host hotels, but people got every hotel booked up anyways. It's, it's very tough. It's and very what's tough. the field of cars is how many, you said a couple hundred cars? They'll probably have 350. Wow. I think yeah. is what they limit the entries to. Yeah, That's I wild. think I think they when you register they limit it, okay? And it sells out what did it sell out in? Five minutes, ten minutes? Nine minutes it sold out. Yeah, nine minutes, three hundred and fifty people registered. Wow. So, so and then and then you get put on the wait list. Okay. You can email the wait list and ask to be put on it. And if people drop out card, yeah, if they drop out or if their credit card bounced or something happened, they didn't end up registering. Um They'll pull these people up onto the wait list. You know, it's a it's a courtesy that if you registered and got in and your car, you can't, you can't make it for whatever reason, that you should tell them that, hey, man, I'm, I'm out, you know, grab some. Give it to somebody money. else. Yeah. No, they won't give you your money back, but they'll no, sell your spot no to somebody else. <laughs> Zero refunds. Your $500 is gone. So. <laughs> and so it's 500 bucks. That's just to be part of the event. Right. And then all the other things you, you, you get, you, you get a lot of swag though. I mean, you get a ton of, I, I couldn't believe how many t-shirts we got for nothing. I mean, yeah, you get a bunch of t-shirts. It gets you in the racetrack every day. It, you know, your, your extra expenses are your food, your fuel and your hotels. So you're going to have to buy gas and food for yourself every day, you know, in regular life. So yeah, it's, they, they, yeah, they give you, it's expensive, but not band. terrible. Yeah, but you yeah, guys, you, yeah, yeah, you guys are figuring it's worth it. I mean, it's worth it for you guys. You, you I mean, it's well, totally yeah, worth it. We you would enjoy do this it multiple times if it it was horrible. <laughs> yeah, you know? well, some people would think that this would be this would be the opposite of a vacation for them. They would hate the whole week. They would just be you know grumpy Gus all week long. Yeah. And then there's guys like us who are like, yeah, give me more, give me more. I want more. <laughs> well. You know, I, I think it's been it's been great to talk about it and kind of get an idea of what it's all about with the sick sick the magazine the the sick week sick summer and all that stuff. Um, it'd be interesting on this. You know, I, I'm kind of looking at that. Well, what, why don't you fly out and you can be Prescott's navigator? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you never. Yeah, know. I just, when is the race? When is it? The, first, first, uh, first of June, like uh, second, maybe the second week of June. Some, yeah, second week of June. Yeah, it's June 9th, I think, is that's uh, Monday, right? Yeah, 9th, right? Yeah. yeah, you never know. That might be uh, that, that, that might be something that could happen. I don't know. I know, I know I'm yeah, going to. Yeah, I'm going to. You should not hesitate. You should like, just do it and, you know, suffer the consequences later. Hey, I'm all about yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm all about, listen, that's what I tell people all the time. People are like, don't you think it's kind of sketchy? I'm like, look, that's what good stories are made about. It's like a sketchy start, <laughs> and we know something's going to happen, but it always makes a good story. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, you yeah. can report from the road. You know, you'd have that's a blast. <laughs> I know. Listen, I, I I love it. I think it sounds like a great time. Um, I definitely, uh, I you know, I, I've got my little chop top that I had, and I, I just yesterday my brother and I put my, I put one of those AMR five hundred superchargers on it, and I, I okay, had, and, and the car is not a blazing fast car, right? Just a regular stock trans. And it had an 1800 machine in, you know, low compression Berg mode with 42 DCNFs. That car, and I and I had my uh, my telephone racetrack app, and I did before I did the supercharge. My zero to sixty was like 12.8 seconds. Now my zero to sixty after putting after going getting rid of the dual car, was putting a single AMR 500 supercharger on it that runs at eight pounds of boost. Um, I put that thing on with a single 40 Delor- or forty Weber on there, and it 
change it to a 7.8 second zero to 60 which is that's uh, <laughs> it's impressive which is substantial yeah, and, and all i thought to myself <laughs> is i gotta put a five speed in this car because now it gave it like motorcycle <laughs> response like 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 an like a jet bike you know response like it's real uh, real crisp and uh-huh. um, you know it's one of those things where you know i started thinking oh man i should take that on that but then that would put me in a different class It'd be a power adder class and i have no chance you know what no I mean? but, it wouldn't be yeah it, it, no you'd just no. be in the in the like the big group that everybody else is in you'd be in the beetle group oh what yeah, all the beetle vws group. versus hot rods yeah because yep. I, I would yep. let, so even with that little supercharger on there you'd still qualify for that group wouldn't matter oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, think I don't that, think there's any rules that, you know, that's got to be a full swing. That motor, that motor, I mean, it runs pretty crisp with the right gear trans. And especially I was thinking like, man, if I found a, a loop of eighth mile tracks, because that that's really where that car would shine, right? Would be the eighth mile. It wouldn't, you know, quarter mile is just, you need so much power to make it up on the big end, you know? And, I, you know, I keep thinking as I'm driving this car, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, get some... Uh, you know, put the five speed in there because I bought that five speed that Prescott built. I still haven't got it. My buddy in Chicago has got it. <laughs> it's, it's still on the floor. <laughs> It'll yeah. last forever. And, and so uh, <laughs> you'll never blow it up. <laughs> but I'm fig- I'm figuring this car is probably sitting at about you know 110 dyno horse if you were to put on a, on a chassis dyno. But it's a real crisp, fun thing, and I think it's more about the experience, the adventure, and the camaraderie of of going out with a bunch of people and doing it. You know, I think that's really the most. Well, that about. um. That six sixty six event might be fun for you, you know. I saw that. I saw that's eighth mile, so I thought, man, all I gotta do is and I maybe have to get uh maybe somebody come out with me and just, you know, follow me out. I mean, I could drive the car out there to Missouri, I think, where it starts, then just run it down there right. and then just finish off and go home. You know. Or yeah. get it you know, yeah, it might direction. be cheaper to have it shipped out there. You yeah. never know. Yeah, no, it probably actually it probably would. It probably probably cost me seven, eight hundred bucks to ship it there and then just not have to deal then with t- the house take a plane the two out day there. drive going out there yeah yeah you never know listen my gears are turning man and i and i'm thinking i'm thinking about this long and hard because now as i'm starting to get this car but see i'm gonna do it different because I'm, I'm kind of a west coaster so i'm gonna have a stereo in and i'm <laughs> i'm gonna have drink holders <laughs> i mean i'm really i'm really you know i'm, I'm bougieing the thing up you know i'm trying to have a, a yeah i don't time. even have cup holders <laughs> yeah. i never had cup holders yeah uh, I, I upgraded to 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 dual cup holders last year yeah. But it is one of those slip over the tunnel yeah. things that holds two cans yeah. that you yeah, I got, that you pull I got you, yeah. you pull it off before you go down the racetrack, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, because that adds it. weight. You know, <laughs> I I I think it's it's definitely sounds like something that more VW should do, especially the Midwest mm-hmm. VW guys. There's probably plenty of guys out there with some fast cars in their garages that could run along this and have fun. Because I mean, I think if you guys were out there with ten guys. You guys would just have a blast, especially if everybody's cars are fairly similar, and a lot of people bring them backup parts. You know, you guys be able that, to, you know. That's a pipe dream. You're not going to get ten guys from the Midwest all to get together and do that. They're too cheap. You never <laughs> yeah. know. Listen, you never know. Yeah. They, they they might but, feel the influence of hearing how fantastic the trip sounded. So oh, it's it fun. Be, we, it would be nice if more got involved. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I, I, it's not that expensive, really. If you already own the car, you're halfway there. Yeah. Right. You know, it's not fast enough. There it's is the no giving up your time. vacation time as much as anything else. You've got to you've got to give away a week of your vacation time that you might spend with your family doing something else. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I so. told everybody. You're a you're a week removed from the rest of the world. Yeah. You have you, you can't have anything else going on because this is all you're going to do twenty four seven for five and a half days. And, yeah, and this year we've got. You know, in six six summer, we've got three VWs going. Plus, we've got two other cars driving along with us in what they call uh, sick ward, which is basically you do everything except race your car down the track. So we'll have our own little caravan within the uh, event, you know, traveling around. It'll be fun. Well, that's good. And I think they're still having that party at at Motion Raceworks. I think they're they're having that party again, which was pretty cool. They had live music and free food and, and and trailer burnouts and trailer burnouts well that's yeah. trailer burnouts are given everywhere we go yeah but, right uh, well yeah, i tell you you know i'm glad we were able to get you guys on here and just kind of get an idea of what it's like to do to do that event and hopefully 
you know, you guys uh, could could figure out a way to get down here for my October event because that's a driving around event, but it's all stationed at a casino. So it's kind of fun. You have a lot more time to kick back and have a great time and you get a chance to win some cash. So, uh, but before we wrap up, Prescott, I know you've got, you published that book on engine building. Did you want to plug Yeah, we that? need to do a podcast on that. Well, yeah. I was going to ask you, I'm, I'm in the process of, you know, I, I want to thank you for inspiring me. Yeah. That's, that's what I want to do because I'm starting my own podcast. Oh, fantastic. Um, I love it. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, we just started recording a couple episodes. It's called the Bruce city beer, uh, Brew City Bug Talk. I like is the it. name of the pop. Well, and it's just me, local Volkswagen scene, and just uh, Volkswagens in my area, and just me babbling on and on with another guy. And it's uh, but you inspired me. Well, to, good. Uh, hey, more, you, you, you can't have all the glory. That's <laughs> it, man. Hey, the more the merrier, man. I like it, and uh, I definitely uh, I, I look forward to hearing a few episodes when you guys put them out, man. And, yeah, uh, oh, definitely. It's it's a lot of fun, and and uh, and, and I, I just like to thank you for inspiring me. <laughs> no, absolutely, man. Look, at that. I like I said, the more the merrier. And I love, uh, you know, I just love to be able to bring content to people, kind of give them open their eyes to some stuff that they might not think about off the top of their head, and and maybe people go out and do more power tours and sick weeks and drag weeks and all that kind of stuff and get more VWs out there in front of these young kids so that more kids get in this hobby, you know? Well, that's, that's be like great. one of the, one of the stickers that that's uh, sick to make has what, how's it go? Chuck? Just, just, what does it say? Uh, just for the, uh, yeah, just drive your blank basically. Yeah. Right. Just, yeah. 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 Just drive your junk. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, that's, good. that's what it's Stop about in your mouth. Yeah, oh, yeah, and then, yeah. It's, I, who, I don't. They never look down on somebody that has a car that's slower than mine. Never, ever. I don't care if it's a Volkswagen or not. You know, if they're they're, they're having they're fun, having, they're having a blast. They might be having more fun than I am. I don't know. Right. I mean, they might I have less know. worries. You know. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, you don't know how boring their life is. You know. Right. This 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 might be a lifetime you know event for them. So you can't you can't crush somebody else's dream. So mm-hmm. I mean. I, I love it when, when people are having a good time with their car. And uh, yeah, That's awesome. I hope more. Well, guys, I appreciate you guys coming on the podcast. And then real quick, we, we will we will get with you on that on that book and just do a podcast about the book that you put out. Um, but if people yeah, want to go check absolutely. this book out, where can they look the book up and how do they get any information on it? Uh, you can you, The book is available anywhere online, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. The name of the book is uh, – Volkswagen air cooled engines, how to rebuild. Nice. Um, you can, or just, just, just search my name and, and the book will come up, but it's, it's offered everywhere. It's, uh, it's published by car tech books. So you can go to car and just, uh, look for Volkswagen books and my book will be on there. It's, it's, it's in its second pressing now. So it's really, it's really taken off. Oh, very cool. Well, <laughs> and, uh, so it, it's been great. Well, that's good. And then, Chuck, I mean, your claim to fame is you're just faster than Prescott, and so that's what we're we're kind of. That's about all I got, right? And who knows how much? And that might not last much longer with the uh, with the uh, improvements Prescott's making over the winter. So oh, I've got to I got to start I, making mine too. Yeah, you I'm put still it. not going to be I'm not going to be air fryer though. You can promote your air fryer uh, Facebook page there. Oh yeah, air fryer racing on Facebook. I like it. So if anybody yeah. wants to get in touch with you guys, air fryer racing, and then Prescott, you you got a page that you're on, or you just just I got a bunch of pages. There's underdog racing is one of the pages. I have a page for my little shop, Prospect Hill Performance. I also have a Facebook page for the book itself, and I and I have my own personal page. I answer all the messages for all four of those pages, oh, plus cool. the Beer Panzers page and uh, and 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 Bruce City uh, Bruce City Bug Talk. Bruce uh, City Bug Talk. Fun. I like it. I like it. Bruce, Bruce City, City Bug, Bug Talk. Talk. Let me know when yeah. it's coming out so I can help plug some episodes for you, man. Oh, for sure. It's going to be out. The first episode, the introduction episode will be out uh, after the first of the year. It's I, in the can. I We're like just it. waiting for another one. And we recorded another one today um, about um, about uh, my book, actually. Well, and then we're going to do one with some local local Volkswagen guys, and it, it's a lot of fun. It's fun talking about Volkswagen. It is, and what I can and what I can tell you from experience, it's a lot of work to kick out an episode. <laughs> tell me about to it. kick out yeah, an episode. So 
every week and i've got i've got 250 episodes out now so we yeah got, uh, i'm never gonna make <laughs> yeah we, we're gonna try to do two a month and uh just between the the hardware we bought and the microphones and the mixers and the and the uh, yeah, headphones and that's the hosting you know hosting was 160 dollars a year or whatever and yeah it's it's yeah it's it's an expense but it, it's 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 a hobby you don't mind spending money on. no it's so, it's good yeah. stuff and giving people some good content to listen to and getting some different ideas and things like that so yeah no i listen man i'm glad i'm that's the whole purpose of this podcast is to inspire people inspire people to Start a podcast if they want or get out there, <laughs> get out there and go to a drag and drive event and show up in your Volkswagen and make some people show up and give it a shot. That's See how it. much fun it is. That's it. Well, yeah. Yeah. We can't have all the glory. Well, guys, right. I, I appreciate you guys coming on, man. Uh, um, we'll definitely. Uh, Thanks. Appreciate we, we'll it. We'll follow up. Yeah. We'll follow up after six summer this year and we'll kind of see how you guys did. Well, we, I, I kind of expect to see you in the passenger seat for six summer. <laughs> Listen, so. <laughs> man, you, you might be, you might be surprised when I, if I show up. So, uh, well, uh, I'm going to start seeing how my calendar's looking. I know I'm going to be leaving for, uh, for Europe for the European bug in at the end of June. So depending on when it, when it is in June, I'm able to make that, I may be able to make that happen, you know? So awesome. <laughs> yeah. You got a place to stay at my house. So that's it. Well, I appreciate it guys. If, all, all right. right there. You got Thank it. you. Well, thanks. If you guys like this podcast, and I know you did, make sure you share it with a friend. We love when you share the podcast. It helps us grow organically, and I appreciate you guys for listening. So don't forget, copy the link, the player, whatever you got, post it on your Facebook, post it on your Instagram, share the podcast. We love when the listeners share the podcast. So if you want to support the podcast, go to letstalkdubs.com. Click on the store tab and pick up some merch to support your favorite podcast. Don't forget, room reservation information for Let's Talk Dubs One Crazy Week in 2024 happening October 20. October 3rd through the 5th is up and live on the website. So you guys can go get the room code. Reserve your room today. I don't want to warn you. There's plenty of rooms available right now. They will be sold out a month before the event. So make sure you guys book your rooms today. They're cheap. 40 bucks for Wednesday, Thursday, 90 bucks, Friday, Saturday. No one can beat that. Free trailer parking. Secured parking with 24 hour security for your Volkswagen. You can't beat that with a bat. So go check it out. Let's talk dubs.com. And if you want to get a shot on the podcast when you pick up some merch or you leave a five star review for your favorite podcast. And don't forget to leave a written review with your name in the description. For example, shot out to my guy getty leaves a pot just just bug and leaves a five-star review bill t your talks with with vw people new and older great thank you george t and other las vegas club members plus all the guest speakers for filling my ears while the while on the job site or when working on my vw's great double feature with gary emery and a local yokel listen to while working on the dormobile roof repair for a buddy 65 split he's getting it ready for the shasta snow run in 20 in 2022 also killer episode with lance looking forward to another one crazy week and keep up the great conversations just like that that's how you get a shout out on the podcast so shout out to getty for leaving that five-star review don't forget to leave a five-star review get your name shout out heard over the airways all your homies will be jealous more podcasts coming up next week guys until next week later probably don't know that there's a new Volkswagen out that doesn't look like a Volkswagen. 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 Volkswagen.